Hello all, thank you for joining us again and allowing us to make art with you today. Today we will be discussing the history of our chosen artist and then creating a piece of art that symbolizes that artist's best work. The artist we will be covering today is Marie Watt. A contemporary artist who lives and works in Portland, Oregon, she was born to parents of Native American and German descent. Watt is a member of the Turtle Clan of the Seneca Nation, and her father's family were Wyoming ranchers. These two factors in her background have influenced her artwork as Watt describes herself as half cowboy and half Indian. Her work is influenced by history, Iroquois proto-feminism, and indigenous teachings. She explores the intersections of history, community, and storytelling, as she does independent work as well as cooperative art pieces. She majored in art and communications at Willamette University in Salem, Oregon. She also explored museum studies at the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe. She holds an AFA degree from the Institute of American Indian Arts, a BS degree from Willamette University, and an MFA in painting and printmaking from Yale University. Marie's work primarily consists of anywhere from small to large-scale cloth and metalworks. These collaborations, which she refers to as meditations, with smaller works being done by her, while her large-scale pieces are typically done in groups, be them sewing circles or events where people can join in and help her create, Marie sees the fellowship and sense of community as a core part of the work that she creates. As someone proud of her heritage, she looks to engage viewers with aspects of Native design, oral tradition, and Western history to create sentimental and truly memorable pieces of art. We will be looking at her pieces titled The Blanket Stories, Western Door, Salt Sack, Three Sisters. She was commissioned by the Rockwell to gather blankets from people with a story, straight from what she says. Each story is represented by a textile in this sculpture. The textiles were contributed in response to a call for blankets and their stories from the community, including local residents, the Greater Finger Lakes region, and friends of the Rockwell. While each blanket in this column represents one person's story, it also serves as a marker for the collective memory of a larger extended family. Each story communicates the universal nature of our shared human condition and has the potential to unite us. Blankets are everyday objects. We take them for granted. Yet we, as we use them, they quietly record our history. A lumpy shape, a worn binding, mended patches. Every blanket holds a story. So after hearing what Marie had to write about her work, what do you feel when you look at it? What is the significance of a blanket? What kind of words come to mind when you think of a blanket? Can they hold memories? When Marie says she works with blankets donated from people, she always makes sure they include an excerpt about what the blanket means to them. We do truly believe, as does Marie, that we have the ability to thankfully collect objects and connect them to memories, which can help keep loved ones with us forever. For our project today, we will be making our own blanket stories, if you will, by taking blankets and making our own work similar to ones we saw from Marie. What we would like you guys to do is go around your house and gather blankets that hold some sentimental value to you. Maybe it is a blanket that you've been using since childhood, a gift from someone important to you. If you really want to make it interesting, try using blankets that you don't really know and ask people in your house about the history of those blankets. Allow them to share their sentiments with you as well. Ask your friends or family for help and even collect blankets from them. You might get a great story out of it. Next we are going to gather pens, a few pieces of paper, and something to stick the paper to the blankets, whether that's thumbtacks, tape, safety pins, or string. Now, what you're going to do is cut the paper that you have into as many tiny sections as blankets. Make sure that the paper sections are big enough so that we can see your handwriting, as people need to be able to read your story. Next, you are going to take the paper and write the memory associated with the blanket. Remember, you're doing it for every single blanket in the pile, 
So, if those blankets have sentimental values to others, encourage those people to write memories themselves and attach them along with you. Once you've recorded those memories, attach them using the same safety pins or string that we talked about earlier. Now look back. You've created your own communal art piece. Take a picture of it. Share it with those you love. Something like this will really show others just how much their memories or simple gestures have meant to you. That is what Marie was trying to convey in her work. The sense of community and love that simple objects can hold. The memories that will forever live inside of those objects. And as always, Thank you guys for sharing your creativity with us. Cherish the piece you made. I hope you had a great time making art with us again. See you next week.